yes, yes. Good afternoon to all. On the occasion of WMO Day, we are lucky that for today's webinar, we got Dr. R. Suresh Sir, retired Deputy Director General, Metrology, as a speaker. So, Dr. R. Suresh did his post graduation in mathematics from Madurai Kamraj University, Madurai, and holding three postgraduate diplomas in managerial sciences like material management, personal management, system analysis, and data processing from Annamalai University. He obtained his interdisciplinary PhD degree in mathematics and geography from University of Madras. He has published more than 55 papers in national and international journals and presented more than 35 papers in national and international symposia and workshops. Dr. Suresh is an external faculty for the Institute of Remote Sensing, Annamalai University, and a visiting fellow to the Department of Physics Shri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati, for M.Tech and M.E. courses in satellite metrology and remote sensing. He has vast experience in aviation metrology, satellite metrology, radar meteorology, thermodynamics, and statistical forecasting techniques. I would like to call Dr. Sobna Dutta, sir, head MTI, to speak some valuable words about WMO and this webinar. Sir, mic with over you, sir. Thank you, Surya Siris, and thank you. Uh, first of all, I wish to express my heartiest, best wishes to all the audience, including our today's chief guest, that uh, on, in the occasion of World Meteorological Day 2023, uh, I am not going to talk anything about the this year's WMO Day's theme because there are many talks that are being arranged by different IMD offices at different parts of our country. Only thing is, today's, uh, this year's WMO theme is Future, Weather, Climate and Water. Uh, we all understand that due to climate change and all these things, weather is going to be, extreme weather weathers are going to be more frequent, more intense, uh, more intense and whatever climate change has already been done that cannot be reversed and the already occurred climate change that that has already caused a great impact in the in the human life and all life so only and for, for that for that there is projected crisis in water also so accordingly in this scenario all of us on this world we have to we have to we have ourselves smart climate wise weather-wise, water-wise. With this, and now I will just tell a, talk a few minutes about this event. India Meteorological Department say, is a pioneer in meteorological education in this country. And since 19, uh, uh, 1943, soon after the World War, World War II, India Meteorological Department started Operational Meteorological Training Course at Pune and later on in 70s, another one centered Meteorological Training Course started at Delhi. Pune basically it aims, it targets at the discipline of general meteorology means weather forecasting, weather and climate and the Delhi it is mainly instrument and telecommunication etc. Uh, and and India Meteorological Department's training disciplines at Pune and Delhi, since for a long time, they are engaged in the building and strengthening capacity in the field of weather and climate services for the people, rather I should say for the professional who are directly or indirectly professionally engaged in weather and climate services. However, however now there is a need that weather and climate science and weather and climate services information knowledge should not be confined among the only meteorological professionals but with all peoples in all sectors so that means there is a need for community capacity development towards that need since 2021 
India Meteorological Department through its head capacity development center at Pune, that is Meteorological Training Institute, has started organizing YouTube webinars lecture series on different topics in the field of weather and climate science and services. We have started on 28th February, National Science Day in 2021. And our aim is every month there is there should be one lecture. Many times we are success, many times we are failure also. We may be excused. Today, I am very happy and I am very much thankful to Dr. Suresh. Dr. Suresh is, I am a too small person to introduce Dr. Suresh because he is a very, very, he has a vast knowledge on many subjects, many subjects, as Dr. Suresh has already mentioned. Aviation Metallurgy and Dr. Suresh, it is, sometimes I say that it is a coinage word, Dr. R. Suresh and Aviation Meteorology. When he was in the department, that time, Dr. Suresh, Aviation Metallurgy and Dr. Suresh are the same only, the two sides of a coin only. So, uh, although he has retired, from the uh, uh, from IMD, but still he is engaged in many academic activities, including teaching, guiding in the project, guiding in the PhD, all these things already uh, Dr. Siris has mentioned. So I requested him and he is very much kind enough that he has agreed to honor our request and he has agreed to deliver today's webinar series with this small introduction. I now just request Dr. Suresh to start his lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sirish. Thank you, Dr. Datta. And uh, before proceeding further with the lecture series, I would like to say that today being the World Meteorological Day, greetings to all. And this request, when it came from the WMO recognized Meteorological Training Institute of Pune, I said, definitely I will do it. At the same time, every year on this particular day, we as a Meteorological Fraternity, we used to celebrate the day of its existence since 1950. Although International Meteorological Organization started way back in 1873, that is 150 years of meteorological fraternity and World Meteorological Organization since 1950, every year one theme used to be chosen and based on that or apart from that, we have to propagate the knowledge of meteorological science and allied science to the common public. With this in mind, when this request came to me, I said, okay, I will do what could be the topic. Then it was told that aviation meteorology could be the better topic. So if that be the case, aviation meteorology, both technical and science, it has a lot amount of information to be known by the common public. That is why this lecture series I have organized in such a way that it's a popular meteorological science with application to aviation meteorology. Though I am saying popular, I will be covering from elementary and little bit about the intricacies of aviation meteorology and its cost effectiveness, economic benefits by all this. With this small preamble, I would like to proceed further. By meteorology, the definition itself, it is a study of falling meteorites. But gone are the days. Now the meteorology has been defined in so many ways. Out of that, the first three bullets, I would like to say, meteorology is nothing but the study of weather and climate. It is also the study of day-to-day -day atmospheric processes and their causes. And by weather, what do we mean? We all know it is instantaneous, varying from place to place, time to time. Weather is nothing but a sum total of the experienced ambient air temperature, humidity, wind, 
pressure by precipitation we mean right from drizzle up to snow sleet hail etc in addition the weather also contributes or it contains parameter like atmospheric transparency which otherwise we used to say visibility and the weather as it is like thunderstorm hailstorm cyclonic storm and all the convective phenomena and those weather which are caused by clouds of different sizes categories dimensions as we know weather is instantaneous and it varies from place to place if you take a long term average of the weather that we used to call as climate by climate we mean it is a long term average of a minimum period of 30 years as defined by world meteorological organization wmo when we say an average of the instantaneously varying parameters which we call as climate the changes in climate also inevitable the change we used to call as climate change and which happens at regular and non regular intervals so the climate change is also dynamics now coming to the meteorology especially the application part of meteorology the first and foremost user of meteorological science is none other than the aviation meteorological community the first and foremost application of meteorology is for aviation that's why it is called as aviation meteorology there are other applications as well the other parts of shipping like sea navigation or trans transport surface transport etc so they are also meteorology plays a vital role in different ways besides this the meteorological information is also useful for deriving conventional as well as non conventional energy sources it also has a key application over different services which are rather sensitive and classified meteorology also helps the day to day life for the general public thereby it saves the losses of human lives animal lives by human i mean including animals and by animal i mean including human and then plant lives it also helps in various applications to understand the meteorological science one should know the basic science right from mathematics from here we used to have some fundamental knowledge of sequence and series of function non linear dynamics partial differential equation solution for that number crunching which comes in the way of statistics analyzing the data again from the statistical way besides that the data as well as the science behind it which is being explained by the classical physics right from radiation physics optics microphysics everything should be known besides this the recent time we used to talk about global warming climate change etc whether it is happening or not that itself is a debatable question for this the chemistry especially the greenhouse gases the contributions causes longevity ozone all this you know we should have some idea to understand the meteorological science besides this we have something like the geography and geology which talks about the earth rotation movement and again land use planning so this set of knowledge also helps in understanding the meteorology in addition to that we have atmospheric motion which comes in the way of right from kepler's law planetary motion from astronomy then the ocean sciences which is the potential for producing the weather system like cyclonic storm ocean depths ocean color ocean changes all these one you know they interplay and then contribute to the science of meteorology in addition to that to have the parameters we should have a prerequisite knowledge of engineering and instrumentation and it may be a news to many of the 
viewers here that the usage of computer right from univac edvac of 1930s and 40s they were from the meteorological application with even 1 kb ram the current day the number crunching problem once it is coming to dynamical modeling numerical weather prediction modeling which it takes even to get a first forecast output after 4 years in the fastest supercomputers right from gray xmp series and any amount of information now coming to the branches of meteorology depending on the application once again aviation meteorology radar meteorology which talks about the weather systems convective systems up to cyclonic storm the satellite meteorology from which the remote sensing data we are able to have from inaccessible area and thereby using it then comes the practical day to day application for life and property including industry that is boundary layer meteorology environmental meteorology and all in this particular series i would like to say or concentrate only on aviation meteorology right from its fundamental up to turbulence thereby you know we will be having a complete note of what is happening in aviation meteorology now in regard to the meteorological application especially the environmental meteorology boundary layer meteorology you have something called what is the stay kite at what time the plume is to be released and then where it has to go how it has to be dispersed now coming to the actual subject in question meteorology in aviation when air flows over aerofoil the bernoulli's theorem states that it is accelerated on the upper surface by creating a high pressure on the lower surface that is the crux of the bernoulli's theorem so this particular acceleration produces a force that force can be resolved into lift which is proportional to the density as well as the square of the ambient air space that force can be resolved into other component called a drag which is rather pulling it back similarly there are other forces which acts on one is about the thrust another one is about the weight so with these all forces the aircraft or air operation has to take place when an aircraft has to take place the lift has to exceed its weight and the thrust has to exceed its drag when it is taking off and then flying at a particular height which we used to call as cruising level all these forces will balance each other in such a way that the aircraft is sailing in the ocean of air the surface meteorological parameter which we said while defining the weather like temperature humidity pressure wind and visibility and clouds and the weather cast out of the clouds like thunderstorm cyclonic storm hail storm dust storm etc so they have some profound impact on the take off as well as landing operations whereas the upper air wind information the wind shear that is the difference in vertical difference in lateral of the speed and direction of the wind component being a vector quantity the wind shear and associated turbulence and the encountered icing are of paramount importance for the air navigation once the aircraft is sailing so with this small information about even the meteorological parameter and then what are all the forces now in what way the meteorological information will help to the air navigation first and foremost what is the conducive time whether it is a short haul flight or a long haul flight when we mean haul it is nothing but the distance that is either a short distance flight or a long distance flight it is also helpful to decide the take off gross weight with that only an aircraft can safely take off it also decides what could be the flying altitude which is so safety for sailing in case there is a abrupt disruption in weather abrupt development in weather sudden development in weather so the destination cannot be reached 
in other words we have to go to the alternate aerodrome so in such a case we should have some reserve fuel even for landing at the time of landing there may be even so many aircraft will be waiting in a queue thereby you have to hold on the air so for that you should have sufficient fuel that we used to call as reserve fuel so the reserve fuel calculation also depends on the meteorological parameters say for instance if the visibility is so low definitely you cannot land with a minimum threshold value of the visibility once it is observed and reported so you have to naturally hold on at the air over the mid air and probably you may have to spend another 5 10 minutes of fuel then alone you will be permitted to land so that is why the reserve fuel is needed besides this at the time of landing also you should not have too much of weight so for that also you have to calculate either beforehand or you have to expand so here again the meteorology plays a role so in such a case all these bullets whatever i listed the meteorological information is very helpful so once we say like that if there is a small deviation in any of the weather parameters such as visibility or wind and definitely there can be a high change in the air operations it has greater impact so that is why the meteorological information as well as forecast the services provided by a appropriate authority that is a prophylactic value so before the actual disaster comes before that you know we are taking a causative step of protecting ourselves that's why i mean here as a prophylactic so it is a prophylactic information which helps a safe efficient effective conduct of air navigation and then with this introduction there is ever growing need from the meteorological community whom so we is using especially the aviation community there is always a demand we want additional information we want additional precise time specific location specific forecast so that is why the meteorological community is able to meet the challenges give the precise and accurate information as needed by the user community maybe an airline operator or an airport operator both will be needing it now the parameters coming to the parameters as we repeatedly said these are all the instrumentation which measure and uh, give the information about the wind direction speed and maybe you are having a tower over that parameters you are going to use all this information and this is the transmission meter which talks about the visibility meteorological optical range runway visual range this is the silo meter which gives the height of the base of the low clouds with this probably a domestic operation can take place now we mean international operation so there must be a guideline that is why international stand uh, civil aviation organization they made a international standard atmosphere with these conditions under this condition the mean sea level pressure assumed to be throughout the globe as 1.0 0.25 hectopascal the mean sea level temperature is assumed to be 15 degree celsius the surface density is assumed to be 1.225 kg per meter cube the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square and in addition they assume that the temperature as we go up definitely it is decreasing that we used to call as lapse rate that is the rate at which the dropping of temperature with regard to height so the temperature drops with the height that is the lapse rate at the rate of 600 degree per kilometer from surface up to 11 kilometer then the temperature remains constant for some time maybe from from some duration 11 kilometer to 20 kilometer there is no change which, which we used to call as isotherm the same temperature is maintained there of that and the temperature increases due to the stratospheric production of ozone and associated causes that is what we call as temperature increasing with height inversion it is increasing at the rate of 1 degree celsius per kilometer from 20 to 32 kilometers why this is needed this is needed for testing of the aircraft calibration of the instrument as well as guiding the same level of flying so that two uni aircraft they will not fly on the same time at the same location with we have minimum separation or so because that may cause some air pollution so that is why 
these are all standardized values with this value international AV air navigation takes place whatever i said that i have shown in the view graph this is this is what we call as lab site this is isotherm this is inversion the values of pressure etc that have been given over here now coming to the wind wind is nothing but the air in motion we all know it is blowing from high pressure to low pressure and it is depending on the value difference between the pressure between high and low that is what we call as pressure gradient with the pressure gradient we can estimate the wind direction and the visual, uh, with the pressure gradient we can estimate the wind speed also wind is a vector quantity as such the wind speed can be given in different units so somebody will be using kmph somebody will be using nautical mile per hour then meter per second miles per hour all this information so the wind is given in terms of direction right from 0 degree up to 360 degree 0 and 360 will coincide so we mean north as 0 or 360 and then east as 90 degree south as 180 degree west as 270 degree and the terminology used for general meteorology as well as aviation meteorology we used to say easterly means it is coming from east blowing towards west easterly is nothing but westward northwesterly means coming from northwest going towards southeast southeastward so with this connotation the graphs have been put over here for easy identification and then the plotting also it means for the pilot you know we cannot give a number there may be a chart that short form of documentation we used to go by this one the direction from which is uh, coming is plotted in terms of a shaft that goes like a line and the speed etc is given in terms of bar otherwise it is called as feather also one bigger bar corresponds to 10 knots by 10 knots means wind cannot be rock steady it can have fluctuation so that is why we use say plus minus 2 knots that is anywhere between 8 and 12 knots we can give a long bar or long feather a off feather or off bar or a short bar that may correspond to 5 knots here again plus minus 2 3 to 7 a solid fit triangle it corresponds to 50 nautical miles per hour so 50 knots which is nothing but 48 to 52 so the direction from here is this is 270 this i am calling as 250 that's why i have plotted over here 250 55 knots this is this is 180 this is 200 that is why this particular thing we are calling as 200 with the three bars of 30 one bar of 5 35 knots so these are all the connotations why i am concentrating all this is the way probably you can see in the meteorological charts so this wind once it is given to the aircraft probably you know the wind which is coming from the opposite to the direction of the movement of the aircraft that we used to call as headwind that is favorable at the time of takeoff and landing because of the aerodynamics if the wind which is blowing from below that is along the same direction of the aircraft that is called as the tailwind that may be conducive once you are flying at a particular altitude not at the time of landing or takeoff if the wind is just crossing over and then touching across maybe the direction of the movement of the aircraft opposite to that maybe about 90 degrees or so but uh, perpendicular to that so that is called as crosswind so these winds how important they are i have listed over here headwind is favorable for takeoff and landing because of the aerodynamics tailwind is beneficial for flying at a constant height wherever they are flying crosswind is not at all favorable once it exceeds certain value that value has been given over here it depends on the aircraft that is 25 knots even if the headwind is going to 35 knots and above it is rather problematic that's why that also i have written here 25 knots to 35 knots what type of wind probably you know it should be carefully taken into normally people will not venture in with the high wind speeds in addition i have mentioned about wind shear which is nothing but the change in direction as well as speed in regard to vertical in regard to lateral so some plotting is over here though it may not be clearly visible for the audience at a distance so the day, way in which we are defined this is coming from north northwest direction of 25 knots it is increasing to north of 45 knots then again 50 knots then it is changing to easterly that is 0 90 direction of 40 knots there way you know you are having directional change and speed change so this you can see that that is the wind shear this wind shear is causing abrupt variation in the motion that we used to call as bumpiness 
turbulence and associated up and down movement of the aircraft. Now coming to the weather point of view for aviation side, thunderstorm, severe local storm. By severe local storm, I mean a thunderstorm which produces a hail of minimum 19 mm size and above. Sometimes we used to see in pre-monsoon, now we are going to face that particular situation, March, April, May. In some of the interior parts of India, we used to experience hailstone falling over there. If the hailstone size is more than 19 mm size, we used to call that as a severe local storm. The thunderstorm may cause lightning and thunder. In case uh, lightning and thunder associated with shove, precipitation is there, definitely we used to say a normal thunderstorm. If there is no shower or precipitation or it is just rising a dust or sand, etc., they used to be called as sandstorm and dust storm. They are also of the same family. The same wind speed effect will be there. Only difference is that in sandstorm and dust storm, you will not experience much precipitation, maybe a light drizzle or something may possible. The next causal, uh, very, uh, very dangerous factor for severe factor for air navigation is cyclonic storm because we can very well presume in cyclonic storm wind speed is very high and then thereby it is causing problematic for air navigation. Low level wind shear, wind shear we saw abrupt change in wind with regard to height especially the vertical wind shear. So that causes sometimes aircraft instead of landing at a particular point which used to be called as touchdown zone, it will be overshooting of the runway or undershoot the runway, both are problematic. When the aircraft flies in the upper level, normally the temperature decreases to height. In addition, if it has to fly through clouds also, clouds will be having the at that particular height negative temperature ice crystals will be there that will be problematic that we used to call as icing and whenever a uh, convective cloud like a thunderstorm or cyclonic storm everything is there there will be associated up down motion of the vertical velocity downdraft velocity that causes turbulence notwithstanding this the turbulence can occur even without any cloud also that we used to call as clear air turbulence which the pilot used to say as air packet, which is a misnomer. The low cloud, which prohibits the vertical ceiling, that is the vertical visibility, that is causing a lot of problem when a pilot is coming from far off to land at a particular airport. So he will be unable to see even the runway. So that limits the vertical ceiling, etc. That is why it is called a ceiling. And the low clouds also cause something called fog which is detrimental for aviation because it reduces the visibility thereby the pilot is unable to see the edge lights clearly and probably without this, without a proper value of the visibility parameter, he will not be in a position to land or take off. These hazardous uh, uh, weather parameters are very difficult to be forecast with the time precision, location precision and even with the so uh, some amount of lead time so that the planning can take place. Despite this, we excel, the meteorological community excel, we used to forecast as per the defined procedure at what time, what weather can be anticipated, what could be the visibility, what could be the wind, what could be the temperature, etc. based on that only so far that air navigation conducts its safe flight. Now, with this introduction, I am coming to that. Each parameter I want to discuss, wind I have done, and then temperature also I am saying like that. So accurate short-term forecast and a now cost. Now cost is nothing but the description of the current situation of weather and extrapolation for the next two hours. That is a very, very important parameter for safe conduct of flights. Early warning assumes social benefit, economic benefit, passenger convenience, as well as the safety of the flight itself. Now with the early warning, there are some warnings which used to be given by the Met Office to the air navigation community. They are called as aerodrome warning for different weather parameters, right from thunderstorm, cyclonic storm, hailstorm, heavy wind, turbulence, icing, etc. Sigmet warning that is for a wider region concern, aerodrome warning for a local airport concern, and the SIGMET warning may be for
for so many airports within the region. In India, we are having four FIR, one is centered at Chennai, another one at Bombay, third one at Delhi, fourth one at Calcutta. So you can very well see how many airports are catered within that. So segment warning meant for the FIR concern, that is flight information region concern. Then wind shear alert we used to give because at the time of landing and takeoff, especially for the landing, it's a paramount importance. Thereby, he can safely land, he cannot overshoot, he cannot undershoot. Then we used to give the current weather report every 30 minutes. We used to append something called the next two hours, what is going to happen that we used to call as trend forecast. A forecast which is appended to the routine meta, routine met report. So valid for the next two hours, they are called as trend forecast. So this also being used by the airline community for the safe conduct of flights. In addition, we used to call, give severe warning alerts like tropical cyclone, volcanic ash. Currently, one more has been added that is radioactive material, though we wish that it should not happen, but for one or two like Chernobyl, which has happened some time back. So the early warning provided in time scale right from two hours, even up to 30 hours for those some of the technical things I have listed over here. Now, the basic wind we saw at the surface, but the aircraft is flying around 9 km or 12 km. Over that, there will be a lot amount of high wind speed are taking place that we used to call as jet stream. By jet stream, it's a lengthy definition. It is nothing but a strong narrow current of wind concentrated on a quasi horizontal axis with few or many hundreds of kilometers or few thousands of kilometers in lead tens of kilometer in breadth and a few kilometer in width as a core, having a vertical wind shear of 5 to 10 MPS per kilometer, horizontal wind shear of 5 MPS for hundreds of kilometer, and wind speed has to exceed minimum of 16 knots, it may go even 250 knots, 275 knots, etc., having one or two velocity maxima along its axis as a single sentence I have given in bullets. This type of jet stream, because of the wind shear is very high, that is very problematic for the air navigation when they are cruising at a particular altitude. And this particular jet stream, they are observed throughout the year or uh, some spe season specific. And flying over this particular wind core is totally infeasible. I have given us well nigh infeasible. Nearby also, you are having more than 60 knots wind speed, the same wind shear will be acting there also, it's a problematic. So that is why we give in the form of sig weather chart, significant weather chart. Thereby we used to mark the jet core, we used to mark the clear air turbulence, we used to mark the cloud area which is vulnerable, we used to mark about the icing and turbulence all in a single form. So that is of paramount importance used to the pilot concern. And why they are not in a position to fly over there? Because of the wind shear, they will lose altitude even two to 3,000 feet in a matter of few seconds. So thereby, in case another flight is going beneath with 2,000 feet or 3,000 separate, they will be having some mid-air collision. So that is why the wind shear area and then something like that, there are defined procedure. Aviation is full of set of procedures as defined by it. International Civil Aviation Organization or Federal Aviation Administration by America, that particular area. Generally throughout the globe, ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, the rules are not only for the meteorology purpose, but also for the air traffic controllers who are controlling, who are giving the directions, etc., based on the input from the meteorology. Now, coming to the different parts of the jet stream, wherever it is there, as I told you, jet stream can be perennial, which are seen throughout the year. One such jet stream is called a subtropical westerly jet stream, which is coming from west. That is why it is called as westerly jet stream. It is seen throughout the year over the mid uh, tropical latitudes, that is 30 degree to 35 degree. At times it comes even up to 18 degree over the Indian latitude, over Bombay, Gujarat, etc. During southwest monsoon period alone, India will not be experiencing this jet stream. What is the implication for that? because this is coming with a high speed of minimum 60 knots, that is 120 kmph, and maximum even 250 knots, which is 500 kmph. 
with the 500 kmph if it is coming from west to east in case i have a flight which is traveling from say calcutta to jeddah so that is from east to west so definitely even the aircraft will be having 800 kmph speed whereas the opposite wind is pushing it 500 kmph speed thereby the aircraft can move hardly 300 kmph they will not fly that is a different story but at the same time the traveling time is increased thereby the fuel spent is increased once our whenever we are sending this fuel i mean we are releasing carbon dioxide about which i will come later right now i am just giving a clue for that so we also contribute co2 emission so that also has to be avoided that is why it assumes economic benefit on meteorology the second perennial jet stream is called as polar frontal jet stream as the name suggests it is very close to the polar it is an easterly jet stream though not of the same magnitude it is seen at a lower height with a lower wind speed but even then it is a problematic other than the perennial jet stream we have season specific jet stream especially for the asian subcontinent and precisely for indian subcontinent tropical easterly jet stream which are seen during june to september our southwest monsoon period they pass over the latitude between 13 and 8 degree that is chennai latitude and trivandrum latitude it meanders like that it is traveling right from bay of bengal up to arabian sea it goes like that but its speed is not that high but it is seen at a higher height so that have been given over here in addition to this, during southwest monsoon period, June to September, we have another low-level jet stream which crowns, which crosses the uh, equator from southern hemisphere. That is why it is assuming the name as cross equatorial jet stream. Who invented first one is called a scientist by name Finlater uh, Seeforer, really Finlater jet stream. So this also is a problematic, especially for the low altitude flights because this is occurring at a low height. Sometimes it may not even exceed 60 knots qualifying the jet stream, but still we are calling because it satisfies the other criteria of length, breadth, wind shear, etc. Now with this jet stream, probably I am taking you to the new story. When the wind blows over a mountain, it rises over, then it goes to the other side. When it is rising over, it is called the windward side. When it is going to the other side of the mountain, it is called the leeward side. So with this, it creates a waveform. That waveform has a vertical propagation as well as a horizontal propagation. Transverse wave, etc. We have studied in physics. So here, the waveforms are generated. That may be problematic. It depends on how high is the mountain. Especially in the Western Guard, you are having a peak height as about 1.48 km or so. It may go another two and a half times. The winds will be sliding over the slope. It travels that way. I give an animation in the next slide. Right now, you can very well see it forms in the form of wave. Over the wave, the clouds will be formed. Those clouds are called as rotor clouds. Lenticular is in uh, Europe, etc. So they are also pro problematic, especially for the air navigation. a paint brush type and then whatever with the microsoft powerpoint i could make it so aircraft is coming there along with the wind the aircraft rather has a bumpiness turbulence it goes out fortunately our western guard height is low that is why only for the low altitude flights especially from kerala maharashtra traveling crossing the western guard coming towards either tamil Nadu or karnataka or andhra they face the musings here this occurs maybe around four and a half kilometer or five kilometer for the short haul, short duration flights, short distance flights. For this, you know, we used to alert by way of something called significant meteorological warning by the bigger Met officers called meteorological watch officers. Now comes to the clouds. Clouds are nothing but a visible collection of condensed nuclei. For the cloud to form, you require prerequisite conditions and the clouds can be a visible collection or conglomeration of nuclei. They may result with the precipitation right from drizzle, rain or shower or they may not. Some of the clouds we have seen, they are just seen as a fair weather. It is not producing any precipitation. They are called as inaqueous clouds. 
some of the clouds they give torrential rainfall sometimes we used to say even cloud burst etc some years back we experienced even 98 cm over bombay etc or in some cases with the cyclonic storm without cyclonic storm even 30 cm in 24 hours we have seen in the papers and these are all natural so the clouds depending on their appearance texture structure they have been classified now coming to the cloud formation mechanism for the cloud formation mechanism you require high humidity the humidity has to settle over some nuclei those nuclei are called as hygroscopic nuclei they have affinity for water so how small they are i have given here one particular nuclei is less than 0.1 micron one micron means 10 power minus 6 of a meter we cannot even visualize with a naked eye or even with microscope so such a nuclei is available around us and some of the nuclei they attract moisture say for example our salt particles over the salt particle normally water condenses so the nuclei over which the condensation take place they are called as hygroscopic for cloud formation you require high humidity that humidity has to settle over the nuclei and then who has to carry it there are instability forcing and other mechanisms so with this the cloud forms depending on their appearance structure texture size shape etc we used to classify the clouds as low cloud medium cloud high cloud depending on the base height depending with that depending on the appearance we used to say cumulus or stratus by stratus we mean it is a stratiform layer type by cumulus we mean like a bubble or cauliflower something like that so with this depending on the appearance we used to call uh, stratus cumulus alto cumulus by alto we mean it mid layer by cirrus we mean very high clouds some clouds which start from surface go even up to 16 km 22 km they are called as cumulonimbus or thunder clouds so these are all the cloud imagination for our purposes now i am taking you to the thunderstorm thunderstorm is also a cloud family in this cloud family what you are having is depending on the appearance etc it is causing lot amount of problem for our air navigation so it is causing blinding flash of light it is causing thunder which are all non bearable when the thunderstorm clouds forms there will be up and down motion that causes the turbulence and then with that air navigation is a problem here is a view graph you can very well see there are so many lightning spikes going out and the thunder cloud produces so many charges between the charge differences positive charge and negative charges the flow of electron goes it produces a high voltage that voltage once it is striking over the air bubble it is unable to extend in a short time it produces sound which we are calling as thunder which may be of 60 to 140 decibels or so this is a problem for aviation as i have been repeatedly saying why it is a problem because it produces a electromagnetic field that electromagnetic field due to which the on board aircraft instrumentation will mal function analog instrument as well as digital instrument for digital instruments more will be the problem because they are normally working with a very very minimum voltage of 5 or 12 volts dc whereas the production of electromotive force there it may be of mega volt per meter that is the pdf it also causes the bumpiness of the aircraft turbulence it also causes the icing then icing once it is increasing over the blow um, blade of the aircraft it stops the air intake carburetion failure aircraft failures thereby aircraft may even fall or it may even lose the altitude the moment heavy shower is there it causes the runway wet if there are precipitation accumulation over the wet runway though we are taking care of everything it causes somewhat slippery that may also cause a problem in addition to the normal rain or shower thunder storms will produce some hail stone also the hail damages over the aircraft you can very well see these are all the real time picture the date also have been given over here because the hail stone size will be a baseball or a cricket ball it comes with a speed aircraft also moves with a the speed thereby the momentum mass into velocity takes place thereby it destroys makes a dent and problem in the nose as well as the blades wings etc another family of the cloud is fog we are all familiar when the fog is there the visibility can be even 20 meter 50 meter 100 meter 1000 meter etc 
anywhere up to 1000 meter for the fog formation it requires some conditions similar to that of cloud formation in addition it usually forms when the stability prevails not instability if the instability prevails a cloud will go to a greater height whereas the fog it will be restricted very close to surface that is why we call fog as a cloud at or close or near to the surface it requires some condition those conditions have been given over here due to paucity of time i'm just rushing it out so from the fog whatever we are seeing based on the satellite also we are able to capture it through microphysics one such microphysics plot i am giving over here of the recent origin this is the area of fog usually fog will be uh, punctured out when the incoming solar radiation comes and then churns there by heating takes place there by it will be diluting itself as a drizzle or something like that but over northern india especially when the pollution is more when the fog is formed as thick even the visibility is low but at same time even it will last even up to 2:30 3 o'clock in the afternoon whereas if it happens in the southern peninsular india say tamil nadu or karnataka etc normally that will be punctured out the fog will be vanishing fog will be dissipating even after one or two hours after the sunrise so the difference between a fog forming over south from fog forming over north especially the india is concerned vast the difference is vast all of a sudden from 5000 meter visibility over bangalore it may drop to even 200 meters how to predict that is a challenging task so that challenging task how to address it requires some data so this data also requires some upper assumptions and at what time the stability starts coming in for that you know you should have something called upper air radio sound radio sound balloon and balloon based observation so these are taken every day twice a day now probably you know due to some reason or something like that some other assumptions could not be taken but nevertheless for fog prediction this set of information is a must because the rise of temperature with height with regard to the very close surface which we call as ground based inversion that's a vital parameter in addition the stability which is a vital parameter that can be revealed only through the radio sound upper air ascent or gps sound upper air ascent now i am taking you to another family that is cyclone family which we discuss about during cyclone heavy winds will be there there will be radio communication failure pilot cannot contact the ground based air traffic controller there are so many problems with regard to rain as well as wind speed over indian region north indian ocean we are having 15% of the global cyclonic storm formed over here the highest is over west north pacific uh, where in the percentage frequency is 30 the remaining places cyclone storms are there at any point of time anywhere in the world probably one cyclone or other is taking place so it does not prohibit our air operation we have to mitigate we have to see that how we can avoid it by enrouting it then besides this there is another serious uh, problem from the uh, airline point of view air navigation point of view is that icing occurs the temperature drops as we go high, increase uh, increasing with the altitude and uh, in that particular scenario freezing degree that is 0 degree or minus 8 minus 20 etc normally my 0 to minus 8 will cause severe icing and minus 8 to minus 20 will cause a moderate icing and that also moderate to severe even up to minus 32 degree we used to say the liquid water in the water form itself they are called as super cool liquid water so over the super cool liquid water or cooled liquid water if the hot air goes ice forms get a crate each other they grow big in size they stop even the air intake thereby even the imbalance is caused air combustion is lost engine efficiency is lost that that is why air aircraft icing is a serious concern it can happen even at the ground level also especially in the european continent uh, northern latitudes terrain over the wings etc the ice has formed and because of the differential weight in the wings even imbalance is caused even at the time of landing so that is why that uh, clearance of ice is a must this is over the airport concern whereas if you are flying if icing occurs there are provision with that probably de icing etc electronic instrumentation through that we are melting the icing thereby we are avoiding that one so de-icing is another thing for this what is the way out world area forecast system 
they started providing the icing information at 1.25 degree by 1.25 degree latitude longitude trade that we are providing to the pilot thereby he takes a look at it and then he tries to avoid that a typical example how we are giving the forecast this is the real time picture of uh, kalpana satellite we are given a forecast 24 hours prior to that though the map scale is something different you can visualize india so over the southern peninsula india you are having icing potential as more we have caution and exactly cloud has happened these are all nothing but the vulnerable uh, cb cloud which used to call as cumulonimbus cloud there is another area wherein vulnerability is there there are also clouds are there so this we anticipated even 24 hours ahead thereby it is giving a prophylactic value for the pilot concern now i am taking you to the last but not the least part of uh, aviation hazard that is a turbulence Turbulence is a daunting subject in classical physics, dynamics, fluid mechanics. This I am not saying, famous scientists have said, I have already listed over here. Turbulence is the hardest element that can be modeled together. And a typical examples may be a smoke from my agarbati, uh, even a digest from a particular flow of air or something like that, that itself we are unable to identify. Whereas if you fly at 10 kilometer and then there is a drop in altitude or something like that, that is very, very dangerous and that is very difficult. So that is why some of the famous scientists are right from Isaac Newton, uh, Einstein, everywhere, you know, I am quoting that way. And this turbulence can occur either in the clear air or even within the cloud, which I already told. So now I am giving those famous quotes. Turbulence is a daunting subject, which I already said. Turbulence is one of the hardest elements that cannot be modeled. A Mandelbrot, who is a nonlinear dynamics person, who did some work on fractal dimensions, theory of chaos, theory of nonlinear dynamics. And uh, Richard Feynman, he was saying that it is an unsolved problem, even now also it is valid. Because time specific, we are unable to give. Turbulence is a short lived parameter, maybe lasting for a few minutes or few seconds. Whereas what we are having is 0 UTC and 12 UTC, 12 hours gap, some upper air ascent. Even if that we predict, we cannot be in a position to say 7 hours, 19 minutes, 32 seconds, there will be turbulence. That is the exact way this is the gulp of, a bit of salt we have to gulp it. And for this, we are exceeding our level in understanding the science and then we wanted to reach out how we will be in a position to give a better forecast. So for that only so many thermodynamical parameters, something like that. We started doing thermodynamic indices and I will come to it in one or two slides later what we are going to do. Another famous quote, uh, a famous scientist Lamb, he was saying that I am an old man now. When I die, I will go to heaven and there probably I may get at least some answer for which, you know, I could not get in the eternal world. One may be a quantum electrodynamics. Other one is turbulent motion. About the quantum electrodynamics, at least I am sure I will get an answer, whereas turbulence, I will not get answer. So such a vulnerability, such a problem is the turbulence. Even amidst this particular vulnerability, Ikawa has given a guideline. I am just reading their own quote. Turbulence and to a larger extent, wind shear are the elements for which, for the time being, cannot be satisfactorily observed from the ground and for which in most of the cases, aircraft observation alone will be the evidence. So a first aircraft is experiencing, they will be informing to the ground control ATC. From the ATC, again, it will come to a meta office and the meta office will be cautioning the other incoming pilot through the same ATC. That is what is happening throughout the world. It is not for Indian scenario everywhere in the world. This is as per the FAA guidelines, as per the ECOVA guidelines. But even then, we started giving the turbulence forecast and uh, CAT forecast for more than 20 years throughout the world international air navigation as defined by world area forecast system. Besides this, the aircraft also has a measurement on board radar that is called as eddy dissipation rate. It is nothing but the rate at which the kinetic energy will be dissipated. By kinetic energy, we mean of mv square as a formula. If we consider unit as the ma ma mass as one unit, probably b square as the kinetic energy, its unit is meter per second square, meter square per second square. It is the rate at which it is dissipating, that is why it is meter square per second cube. We are taking a cube root, meter power 2 by 3 per second. 
that is the unit in which aircraft measures and then they will be giving some yellow color red color blue color blue color means you can safely go yellow means warning red is rather problem so these are the thing aircraft has the provision right now and the same one which we want to simulate based on the numerical weather prediction model as of now it is a good information that by 2024 we are going to operationalize at every 125 km by 125 km world area forecast system is going to provide the turbulence which will be a very very vital factor because in the history based on the turbulence alone 65% of the accident took place and billions and billions of us dollar as a compensation in way of loss of life or loss of property something like that have been spent so now there is a way probably at least we can hope that by year 2024 at least by 125 km by 125 km view point we will be in a position to get the turbulence forecast another one is the volcanic ash so it's rather a deceptive cloud during night time during day time it may be mistaken as a cloud this causes lot amount of accidents we are not forgetting way back in 2010 age of jarlo crew over the icelandic area more than a lack of aircraft operation are suspended totally so whenever the volcanic ash erupts that will be a problem for the aircraft either it will be having a abrasive coating and then it will be causing some problem of clogging of the fuel and even the aircraft cannot sail comfortably and it has even high melting point temperature also beside this so and moreover it goes even to a greater height depending on the mountain even up to 11 km fortunately in the indian area we are having only one area that is the barren island over the andaman nicobar islands hardly it will come even up to 50 flight level that is 5000 feet or 7000 feet that's all so that also aircraft evidence as well as we are having some warning advisory centers indian area is covered by darwin and tavlos in france now i am summing up what we have discussed now the aviation meteorological requirements are precise and demanding it is ever increasing and the forecast values are of very very advanced in nature prophylactic in nature before the disease comes we are having a cure accurate forecast with a sufficient lead time that will ensure a better conduct of flight especially reaping the benefit of economic benefit of meteorology by way of passenger comfort by way of providing accurate service on time performance and related services now though the problems are there this we are excelling we are doing our service for the proper planning now i am coming as i said earlier 1 kg of fuel releases 3.1 kg of co2 that is the current status it was earlier 3.17 now the current technology has brought down only up to 3.15 hardly 0.02 as the difference and each flight may be using tons of fuel so that amount of co2 is released but they are not released at a single place that will be at different heights so in the global warming scenario or climate change scenario people are always having some concern about it but at same time without flight one cannot live so that is why it is also allowed to, though it is allowed to continue it is allowed to continue also it is contributing as well as continuing also why we are using even the airplane that is for the global economy so we cannot dispense with so maximum what we can do we can optimize our fuel usage by proper flight planning we can avoid diversion strategy we can have extended strategy for diversion time operations which was we are used to call as extended range for twin operation planning etc twin engine etc how long it will use somewhere you know 180 minutes it will fly even with a single engine so to that action probably we what we can think of there also it is having a contribution from our fuel load the fuel load again depends on the meteorological parameter that is why ultimately whatever meteorology has a value it has ultimate ending up with economic benefits 
So with this economic benefit, whatever has been documented elsewhere, we want to do from uh, India also. I started the story in 2012, uh, 2012 to 2014, but mixed data success, I could not get even a single data, though the airlines contributed that they will be doing it. But this is the need of the hour. We have to document. Then alone, the importance of aviation meteorology will be known to not only the airline operator, but also to the common public. So with this, I would like to sum up the international civil navigation, air navigation. It is governed by two bodies. One is World Meteorological Organization and another one is International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. And the domestic services, they are governed by the local director general of civil aviation authority for the country concerned. And with this guideline, the meteorological services are provided. These services definitely should have, should meet the efficient standards set by the governing bodies like ICAO or FAA. So the operational measurement accuracy, operational forecast accuracy, that has to be met. And aviation is a set of full of procedures. The procedure compliant observational service, accurate forecast, that will end up with satisfaction by the user community, by user we mean a right from passenger, airline operator, airport operator, all people. So in order to have the user satisfaction, we have to have procedure compliant, compliant observational service as well as accurate forecast services. And we need to document the economic benefit of meteorology, then alone we will be in a position to read the benefit of economic meteorology and we will be going further to reach this common public with our on-time performance air navigation service. So with this, let me once again say World Meteorological Day greetings. Thank you. Regards. Bye. So, uh, thank you very much, Suresh sir. Uh, I wish to express my sincere thanks to Dr. R. Suresh, who has very kindly has agreed to on our, uh, our request by accepting our invitation to deliver his very valuable talk on this WMO day. And I am also thankful to all the audience who has patiently uh, listened the lecture and uh, patiently listen. and I am 100% sure that this lecture will be very much interesting, informative, in informative also, and definitely it will add on to the capacity of the community in in the field of in in this field that is uh, important of the weather or influence of the weather on the aviation service, air traffic service, and the importance of the weather information on the air traffic services. So uh, now I will request Dr. Siris, did you find any questions from the audience? If it is there, then out of that, uh, maximum five questions you can uh, just put up. Uh, Sir, there is no question, only everybody told, well explained, well explained, well explained. Yes, yes, that is very clear. Actually, this is the nature of Dr. Suresh's lecture. Whenever Dr. Suresh delivers any lecture, any lecture, actually, every, all audience becomes just convinced. There is no scope for any confusion. It, it is not today. Actually, I am, I am having, I have the opportunity to have Dr. Suresh's lecture many times, many times when he was in the service. So it is a it is a normal thing actually whenever Dr. Siris gives a lecture because I have seen the lecture to explain what is the influence of the different types of cloud on the air traffic services. He has started from, from the morphology of the clouds, structure of the cloud. So if, if any lecture is like this, so grassrooted, so naturally it will be 100% convinced. So again, I just uh, uh, thanks to Suresh sir. Suresh sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I will call it as a day. Okay.
thank you thank you. we will also call it a day and with your permission now we are ending the meeting series can we end the meeting yes sir yes sir definitely thank you